नमस्कार मित्रान सतोष बोलतो है आई एम सतोष हियर एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलिवर माय लेक्चर नंबर फोर विच डील्स विद द इरिगेशन इंजीनियरिंग एंड स्पेशली टॉपिक कंटेन्स द टाइप ऑफ डैम्स एंड स्पेशली अर्दन डैम सो वंस अगेन आई एम कॉन्ग्रेच्युलेटिंग दोज हू हैज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग टू अदर्स टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल to get some ideas cleared regarding civil engineering in simple and effective manner let us start the lecture on earthen dams or dams first of all we are going to discuss the definition of dam what is the dam the dam is the barrier or dam is a hydraulic structure which is constructed across the river to retain the water on the one side and that water retaining side is called as a upstream side and the other side is called as a downstream side and dam is a impervious or fairly impervious structure which does not allow the water to pass through it that is very important then we are going to discuss the types of dams depending upon the material used for construction the dams are classified as earthen dams rock fill dams and masonry or concrete dams and masonry and concrete dams are again subdivided into three categories gravity dam arch dam and buttress dam then please look at this figure this figure shows the earthen dam section the water surface is on the one side that side is called as a upstream side as discussed earlier and the other side is called as a downstream side and there is a impervious cut off trench is there that is we called it as a cot that is cut off trench the upper part is called as a halting this one is as halting and the pervious layer around the halting is this pervious shell is called as a casing so this is the simple cross section of earthen dam and earthen dams are constructed with locally available material soil or gravel which is available in the huge quantities and we can construct the dam very economically the second type is rock fill dam section or rock fill dam rock fill dam consisting of the main body is consisting of dumped rocks as shown in here that are the rock fill and the rock fill is covered by this rubble cushion and rubble cushion is provided to support the rcc membrane and such a type of dam section is called as a rock fill dam section then <coughs> gravity dam and arch dam what is the basic difference between gravity dam and arch dam both are the masonry or concrete dams but in gravity dam the different forces acting on the dams are resisted by the self weight of dam but in case of arch dam different forces acting on the dam are partly resisted by the self weight and partly resisted by the arch action that is the basic difference between gravity dam and arch dam for gravity dam material required is more because all the forces are resisted by its own weight but for arch dam the material required is less as compared to gravity dam because partly loads are resisted by that arch action that is the basic difference and gravity dam are plane in plan and the, as shown here they are plane in plan but arch dams are curved in the plan the shape itself indicates the shape downstream side slope is more for that gravity dams and this downstream side slope is less for arch dam so material required for the arch dam is less as compared to the gravity dam then we are going to discuss the buttress dam in buttress dam rcc thin slab resting over a number of pipe shaped inclined buttresses retain the water pressure there is considerable saving of construction material in buttress dam also please look at this figure this one this one this one these are the buttresses and buttresses are 
connected by a tie beam also and dex slab is provided here in buttress dam and if we took the cross section cc and if flow is along this direction then this is the section cc which shows the concrete buttresses which shows the upstream side also and which shows the concrete deck slab and such a type of dam is called as a buttress dam then we are going to discuss the earthen dam in detail earthen dams are constructed from long time past from ancient times we are going to construct or we are already constructing several earthen dams they are constructed with locally and naturally available material as discussed earlier the construction of earthen dams up to year 1930 is based on the experience but after 1930 there is a development of soil mechanics and foundation engineering and based upon that now after 1930s the earthen dams are constructed more scientifically and more engineered more in engineered fashion okay so earthen dams can be constructed economically up to the height of 250 meter to 300 meter also that is the beauty of that earthen dam the material used for earthen dams are the clay materials which are used for halting and cut off trench sandy material is used for casing that is murum soft rock sandy silt etc and it should have good grading high compacted density and high angle of internal friction and also the property of quick drainage rocks are used for pitching also riprap rocks are used for masonry also sand is used for mortar filter seepage drains etc and cement steel lime and other milling material are used in small quantities for the construction of earthen dam yachas varna mala sir moksha gandam vishweshwarancha gosht athavli to dharan je hota te krishnaraj sagar सागर असं धरण होतं ते धरण हे काही मातीचं नव्हतं परंतु ते धरण मेसनरीचं होतं आणि या मेसनरीच्या धरणासाठी आपल्याला मोठ्या प्रमाणात सिमेंटची आवश्यकता होती परंतु त्या काळात ट्रान्सपोर्टेशनच्या फॅसिलिटी अवेलेबल नव्हत्या आणि इंग्रजांकडून हे सिमेंट फार महाग किमतीनं त्या म्हैसूरच्या स्टेटला मिळायचं तेव्हा विश्वेश्वरांना विचार केला की आपण सिमेंटला सबस्टिट्यूट मटेरियल तयार करता येईल का आपल्याला आणि त्यांनी लाईम लाईम पावडर आणि ब्रिक बॅट ब्रिक म्हणजे ब्रिकची पावडर हे मिक्स करून एक मटेरियल बनवलं आणि त्या मटेरियलला आजही आपण बिल्डिंग कन्स्ट्रक्शनमध्ये ते वाचतो किंवा अभ्यास करतो त्याचं नाव सुरखी असं आहे आणि या सुरखी मॉल्टरनी तो कृष्णराज सागर डॅम बांधलेला आहे आजही तो डॅम दिमाखात उभा आहे त्याच्याच डॅमच्या डाऊनस्ट्रीम साईडला वृंदावन गार्डन आहे ती अतिशय मस्त आहे तर असे सर विश्वेश्वराया जे होते की सिमेंटचा तुटवडा जर झाला तर सुरखीचे सबस्टिट्यूट मटेरियल किंवा सिमेंट मॉल्टरला सबस्टिट्यूट असं सुरखी मॉल्टर वापरून प्रचंड सुंदर आणि अतिशय मजबूत डॅम बांधणारे असे ते अभियंता होते त्यांचा जन्मदिन नुकताच पंधरा सप्टेंबर रोजी साजरा झाला त्या जन्मदिवसाला अभियंता दिन असे आपण संबोधतो या अभियंत्या दिनाच्यासुद्धा तुम्हाला बी लेटेड शुभेच्छा पण ही गोष्ट सांगण्याचं कारण म्हणजे असे इंजिनियर आपण बनायला पाहिजे की जेव्हा एखाद्या गोष्टीचा तुटवडा निर्माण होतो तेव्हा त्या गोष्टीला आपण पर्यायी व्यवस्था तयार करता आली पाहिजे असे ते द्रष्टे अभियंते श्री वश्वेश्वराया यांना माझा मनापासून प्रणाम तर चला लेक्चर असेच पुढे घेऊन जाऊया समोर दिसतोय तो टिपिकल क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ अर्धन डॅम दिसतोय आधी आपण टिपिकल क्रॉस सेक्शन बघितला या क्रॉस सेक्शनमध्ये जरा जास्त मोठ्या प्रमाणात कॉम्पोनंट दाखवलेत कारण यानंतर आपण प्रत्येक कॉम्पोनंटचा अभ्यास करणार आहे वी आर गोईंग टू डिस्कस ईच अँड एव्हरी कॉम्पोनंट्स अँड इट्स फंक्शन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस सेंट्रल पार्ट इज हार्टिंग देन दिस इज द कट ऑफ ट्रेंच देन धिस पार्ट इज केसिंग धिस पार्ट इज केसिंग विच इज लोकेटेड नियर बाय दॅट हार्टिंग this part is called as a pitching this is the pitching made on toe drain this is a rock toe portion this is also important as far as earthen dams are concerned this downstream side this slope there is a turfing made up with harli or special type of grass this is the berm or a road used for vehicular traffic also and to situate that seepage line well within the section 
then this is the drainage section near the berm so these are the different components of earthen dams we are going to discuss one by one first of all halting halting this one is the halting this central part this one this one is called as a halting what is the function of halting halting is also termed as a core it forms a central impervious section constructed with the clay soil silty clay and loam etc it is compacted at omc it provides water tightness to the dam and adequate shear resistance against slipping it controls the seepage flow through the body of dam so control of seepage is also a major function of halting or core section second part is casing as shown here which is situated near the halting section this is the halting section and this part this part which is shown sometimes by dot dots is termed as a casing casing it is it forms the outer portion of the dam it is constructed with the murum soft rock or sand and gravel it is compacted at omc also casing provides a cover to the halting protecting it from cracking and it develops the shear resistance against slip and provides stability to the dam it also helps in drainage so drainage stability shear resistance against slip and protection against cracking these are the functions of casing then third one is the cut off trench this one is the cut off trench which is situated below the halting what is the function of cut off trench it is excavated below the ground level under the halting zone and filled up with the clay soil and well compacted the function of cut off is to prevent or reduce the seepage through the pervious foundation means vertical piping is avoided means the seepage through the foundation is the vertical one so it is called as a vertical piping seepage through the body of the dam is the horizontal or it is called as a horizontal piping so you must know what is the vertical piping means seepage through foundation horizontal piping means seepage through the body of dam then rock to it is constructed with rock pieces or boulders larger than 20 cm size it helps to prevent slogging of the toe due to seepage flow and it increases the stability of dam so you must know this term slogging which is related to rock toe so this is the rock toe and to prevent slogging of that rock toe prevent the slogging of this downstream side rock toe is provided then pitching pitching of 30 cm to 45 cm thickness is provided by laying stones of 30 cm size and the weight of that pitching stones is around 40 to 50 kg you must remember that every time there is a mistake on the side that the stone weight is lesser than this weight it prevents the erosion of material on the upstream face caused due to wave action and protects the sl uh, slope from sudden drawdown what is pitching we shown it here this one all is the pitching and it protects this slope from the wave action and it is very useful component part pitching then turfing it is the planting of special type of grass called as a hurley on the downstream face of the dam it protects the downstream slope from eroding action of the rainwater and berms as shown earlier berms are the offsets provided on the downstream at 8 to 10 meter vertical intervals for 3 to 5 meter width and the object of providing berms are to collect the rainwater and dispose of safely to provide the roadway for the vehicles to reduce the velocity of rainwater falling on the slopes and to provide the minimum cover of 2 meter above the seepage line these are the functions of berm this one is the berm and this one is the turfing of hurley this is the rock toe this is the cut off trench this is the halting this is the casing this is the pitching you must remember all these terms by drawing this diagram then drains it is very important part of earthen dam a network of drains is provided with longitudinal drains that is l drain cross drains and tow drains on the downstream side of the embankment so there are basically three types of drain l drain then cross drain and third is the tow drain okay so please look at this figure and this is the downstream side of halting 
and the drain is provided along the length that is the longitudinal drain and at the end of the dam there is a tow drain this is the tow drain and the drains are constructed to connect the L drain and tow drain are called as a cross drains and this water is this water from the tow drain is diverted into main drain or main river or a canal and this is the system of the drains so you please go through any book and you must know what is the longitudinal drain on downstream side you must know the what is the tow drain on downstream side and you must know what is the cross drain on the downstream side then we are going to discuss the transition filter it is the graded filter placed in between clay core and sandy shells along the downstream slope of halting it helps in draining halting and helps to reduce the pore pressure so it is provided here on this line there is a provision of transition filter to reduce the pore pressure then we are going to discuss the types of earthen dams there are three types of earthen dams first is the homogeneous embankment type Nef name itself indicates it is constructed with a single material second is zoned embankment type of material name itself indicate there are different zones in the embankment and third is the diaphragm type it name indicates there is one construction of wall or diaphragm along along or in the body of earthen dam so first of all we discuss the homogeneous embankment type of earthen dam it is constructed with the single material as shown in here but the seepage goes through the body of the dam and to avoid this seepage through the body of dam the drainage filters are provided to cut off that seepage line and such a dams are called as a homogeneous embankment type but with drainage filter and this one is without drainage filter then we are going to discuss the zoned embankment type of dam please look at this figure the this is the central portion which is made up of impervious core okay then there is one transition filter is provided of medicore permeability or medium permeability and there is a pervious outer zone is there so such a construction of different zones in the body of dam and such a dam is called as a zoned embankment type of dam and this dam is constructed to check to check the seepage also and this type of embankments are widely constructed and the material of the zones are selected depending upon their local availabilities this is a zoned embankment type of dam third one is a diaphragm type of dam please look at this figure this is central portion is called as a diaphragm and it is situated on the pervious foundation or a bed rock this is the pervious foundation and below that there is a bed rock and such a wall is called as a diaphragm it is situated in the center or it may be situated on the upstream side also and for the slope there is a protection of pitching also and such a type of dam such a diaphragm wall is constructed with the impervious soil or concrete steel or timber or any other material then we are going to discuss step by step the conditions of stability of earthen dam this stability conditions are very important the dam should not be overtop by the flood water so there should not be overtopping of the dam the seepage line should be well within the downstream face of the dam so we are going to construct the rock tow or drainage filter on the downstream side to keep that seepage line well within the downstream face of the dam we are going to construct the berms also the upstream side and downstream face should be stable against worst condition means that dams upstream side and downstream face should be stable for sudden drawdown condition also full reservoir condition also there should not be opportunity for flow of water free flow of water from upstream side to downstream side so free flow of water is avoided as discussed earlier the foundation shear stresses should be well within the safe limits that is important for every structure the upstream slope should be protected from the wave action and 
um, borrowing of animals that is also important the dam and foundation should be safe against piping piping means seepage horizontal piping means horizontal seepage through the body of dam vertical piping means the seepage of water through the foundation so you must remember all these terms seepage the flowing of water through the porous porousness of soil is called as a seepage the seepage takes place through the body of dam is called as a horizontal piping and if it takes through the foundation it is called as a vertical piping if seepage is controlled then it is very better condition but if it does not control it affects the dam and it affects the structure also so method used to reduce the seepage in ardan dam or seepage control meter uh, seepage control measures are provision of impervious core that is halting section provision of rock to as discussed earlier and provision of the drainage blanket the drainage blanket is provided near the rock to okay so please look at this figure this is called as a what it is horizontal piping this is vertical piping okay so you must know from the figure what is horizontal and vertical piping then we are going to discuss the seepage line or ferratic line you must remember all these terms for mcqs it is also called as a seepage gradient line it is also called as a hydraulic gradient line it is defined as a line within a dam section below which there is a positive hydrostatic pressure in the dam on the line itself the hydrostatic pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure or zero above the saturation line there will be a zone of saturation in which hydrostatic pressure is negative the saturation line should not strike the downstream face of the dam minimum cover over the seepage line should be 2 meter so provision of bumps ferratic line or seepage line defined as a line within the dam section below which there is a positive hydrostatic pressure in the dam so it is such a line over which there is a pressure equal to atmospheric pressure or pressure equal to zero below that line the pressure is positive above that line the pressure is negative and such a line is called as a seepage line ferratic line seepage gradient line or hydraulic gradient line there are four names for single line okay so you must remember the hydro hydrostatic pressure on the line is equal to atmospheric pressure and equal to zero above this line the soil is saturated by capillary action above that line this is the seepage line so soil above which is saturated by capillary action so such a hydrostatic pressure is termed as a negative pressure okay so first of all we discuss the control of seepage through embankment seepage through embankment means horizontal piping to avoid such a horizontal piping we are going to construct the central core or a halting then second we are going to provide the inclined core as shown here so we can provide the inclined core before that the water is going like that but by provision of inclined core it is reduced or seepage line is well within the body of the dam then we are going to construct the rock to on the downstream side this is the rock to so this is the ferratic line the ferratic line is down or well within the body of the dam and construction of drainage blanket this is the drainage blanket which is provided near the rock to and which places this ferratic line or seepage line or hydraulic gradient line or seepage gradient line well within the body of the dam this is the seepage control for horizontal piping or seepage control through embankment the second is control of seepage through foundation so control of seepage through the foundation is achieved by provision of cot that is cut off trench which is provided below the halting as discussed earlier the bottom width is kept 2 to 6 meter and slope is 4 vertical to 1 horizontal the cut off trench taken to 30 cm in solid impervious rock and it is called full cut off trench it is reduces seepage up to 90% so it is important concrete cut off walls are also provided vertical impervious cut off made of concrete or sheet piles may be provided at the upstream side of the ardan dam and such a cut off is generally be extended through 
the entire depth of pervious foundation so as to achieve the effective seepage control so this is that sheet pile or impervious zone or pile cut off and this is the masonry or cc core wall and cut off this is okay so such a type of construction is used to avoid the vertical piping then we are going to discuss the types of failures of dam so you must know these three types of failure first is the hydraulic failure about 40 percent of earthen dams are failed due to this reason only by overtopping by erosion of upstream side of slope by cracking due to frost action erosion of the downstream slope and erosion of the downstream toe seepage failures more than 33 percent of the earthen dam fails due to seepage seepage means horizontal piping and vertical piping then structural failures about 25 to 30 percent of the dam failures are due to this reason this is due due to upstream and downstream slope slide so sliding is there and faulty construction and improper maintenance leads to structural failure wrong placement of material under and over compaction there are always under compaction not over compaction and blind drains due to mixing of soil okay so this is over for this earthen dam lecture my next lecture is on concrete dams and <laughs> you must listen that lecture also very carefully so once again congratulating you for subscribing me my channel and till then for the next lecture bye 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 my dear students bye